the winner of five Grammy Awards, the prestigious Kennedy Center Honor, and the National Medal of Arts. Jesse Norman was born into a musical family September 15, 1945 in Augusta, Georgia. An African-American opera singer and recitalist, it is stated that her voice was an object of unbelievable awe, a phenomenon over which singers of the future can wander and weep. Alex Ross in The New Yorker. The racial barriers that had blocked Marian Anderson's operatic career were lifting by the time Norman began making her way. Still, like Miss Anderson and many others before her, she found fame in Europe first. While she was still in her 20s, she was winning acclaim at Deutsche Oper, La Scala, and Covet Garden. Her New York Metropolitan Opera debut did not come until well in her late 30s. Unfortunately, we lost Miss Norman in 2019 after a singing career filled with philanthropy and a love for music. As part of the Somerville K-8 Musician of the Month series, Students are encouraged to not see each musician as simply a historic figure, but as a real person. With this in mind, the siblings of Miss Norman graciously agreed to be interviewed by inquisitive Somerville students to answer questions that cannot be found by reading articles or news clippings online. Hi, my name is Sophia. I attend the Healy School. I have two questions about Jesse Norman. One, what inspired Jesse Norman to start singing and play the piano at such a young age? I think the thing that started Jesse singing and playing at such a young age is rooted in, um, in our growing up. And we grew up in the segregated South. And I think that culture as a part of education um, has traditionally been a hallmark in the African-American community. And with that, music has been uh, one of the overarching cultural expressions that you see in singing and dancing and musical instrumentation. In our family, my mom and my dad encouraged our natural Jesse had a natural gift for singing. And like all of us, our parents enrolled us in private piano lessons at a very early age. And I would say that Jesse enjoyed singing as a child. She sang in the children's choir at church. And because she has such a little voice, she sang on programs. And she enjoyed doing that and practicing the piano. And later, I think she would discover that she really liked classical music. So I think that's the root of her starting to sing and to play piano. Hi, my name is Taekwon, and I attend Winter Hill Community Innovation School. Who was Miss Norman's musical inspiration? The foundation for Jesse's musical beginnings was really in our family. We had uh, a piano, always had a piano when we were growing up. Uh, we all took uh, piano lessons. My mother was a trained educator, but she wasn't a trained musical instructor. So when it came time for us to get our piano lessons, as we came along, um, we got our initial lessons from a woman uh, from our home church. Her name was Mrs. Golden. And if you needed advanced training beyond that, you would go to uh, a, a more advanced instructor. Uh, none of the males in the family 
made it past Miss Golden, uh, we converted to musical instruments after that initial piano exposure. I played trombone, my older brother played the tuba, and my younger brother played trombone. Jesse Oliver did uh, go on to uh, get additional piano training uh, from Mrs. Rosa Sanders. Rosa Sanders was a, a junior high school music teacher uh, that gave her more training with the piano and also began to uh, work with her regarding her voice. It was Mrs. Sanders that uh, took her to many musical competitions. Uh, it was Mrs. Sanders that took her to the Marion Anderson voice competition in Philadelphia while she was still in high school. And it was Mrs. Sanders that arranged for her to have an audition at Howard University in Washington, DC. As a result of the audition, a sister received a scholarship to attend uh, Howard University. Uh, and, and that's where she really uh, strengthened her musical foundation before she went on to the University of Michigan uh, and beyond. My name is Bella, and I attend the Argentiano School. What was Jesse Norman's favorite outfit to wear in an opera or a show? Now, um, in terms of Jesse's favorite outfit, the real answer is whichever one she was wearing at the time that she was wearing it. Um, she had um, a real eye and flair for fashion. She loved um, clothes. She loved looking uh, fabulous. And so she was really involved in the design of her costumes and the materials that they were going to be made of and, um, and all of that, and what they were going to fit like. And I was going, I would say that if I were going to choose um, a character that she was playing where the outfit she thought might have been spectacular, it would have been Ariadna. And in that particular, uh, when she was playing that particular character, she she had on a sort of dark, uh, royal bluey kind of um, um, gown and jacket, and it was floor lip, and it was beautifully designed with jewels, you know, all over it. And she wore a tiara, um, you know, with that from one side to the other. And it was, it was just stunning. She was stunning. And as she walked across the stage in it, it was uh, just fabulous. And I think that she truly enjoyed wearing that particular um, outfit. Hi, I'm Mona. I'm in third grade and I go to the Benjamin G. Brown School. Did Jessie Norman have a favorite opera role or did she like all of her roles? Well, in terms of her favorite roles, she, Miss Norman did not believe in singing roles where women were victims, um, where they were um, being downtrodden or uh, victimized in multiple ways. She just did not believe in that. She wanted to be strong and triumphant. So she chose roles that were of a certain uh, level of complexity and where the women were strong. And I think that is one of the reasons why she is held at such high esteem. She performed uh, many roles that were written by German composers such as Strauss and Wagner. And that had very um, complex storylines and that were really more difficult to sing. And she was practically um, specialized in them, I would say. For favorites, I am going to go with that Ariadna um, is the role that she played in Ariadna of Noxious. And the other role that comes to mind that she sang a little bit earlier in her career was Elizabeth. 
in town halls are. And I hope that you have the opportunity um, sometime, someday, to uh, learn and explore those, um, those plots in those particular areas. They are complex and sort of, um, you know, interwoven, but they are great plots. They are as good as anything that is on TV, and I'm sure you'll enjoy. Did Jesse Norman have a, another special talent other than her amazing singing? In terms of her talents and gifts, uh, Jesse had a real gift for cooking. She loved to cook. Um, she would make jams and applesauce, and um, and she loved to cook for recipes. She loved to develop recipes for herself and have friends over um, and she would do the cooking and she also had a green thumb and she just loved to grow stuff and um, you know get out there herself and put her hands in the dirt and uh, watch things uh, grow to um, whatever they want to be some beautiful plant or a lovely flower or even some fruits and veggies hi my name is Reese McCorder and I'm representing the Kennedy School. The Kennedy School's question is, did Miss Jessie Norman ever get in trouble with your parents? If so, how? She did not get into any uh, serious trouble. Um, she did get in trouble regarding her chores. Um, our chores were mostly done on Saturdays and she often took too much time to get her chores done because she was spending too much time listening to the Texaco uh, Metropolitan Opera broadcast. And so she had to learn how to multitask, get her chores done and listen to the broadcast. What kind of music did Jesse Norman like other than opera? Well, in terms of the kind of music that uh, Jesse liked, she had a wide uh, palette of musical taste. She, uh, she loved jazz, um, both the vocal and instrumental. She liked uh, modern R&B. She um, liked Whitney Houston in her day and uh, she liked traditional gospel. She she liked Shirley Caesar and um, uh, Richard Smallwood, who she um, was one of the alma maters she had with uh, Howard University, and um, she she even liked a little rap. I bet that surprises you. Did Jesse Norman have any childhood struggles? Thank you. No, I would not say that my sister had any struggles uh, growing up that would not be typical of, of other children. Um, though we lived in a, a highly segregated community growing up uh, in our hometown of Augusta, uh, we were uh, protected by our family uh, from some of the um, practices that were taking place at the time. Um, my sister had lots of girlfriends, was active in school activities as well as church activities. Um, there was a particular neighbor that we had that she wasn't particularly fond of. Um, Mr. Tillman had a dog named Brownie and my sister didn't really like that dog. And sometimes he would sort of torment her about that fear. Um, I remember once she was getting ready to go to the store and he took a tennis ball and threw it right at her heels. And, and she didn't really see it coming. And before she knew it, Brownie 
was right at her heels, but he was there just to retrieve the ball that Mr. Tillman had thrown. And she was very displeased by that. So maybe we'll call that a struggle, but otherwise, no, uh, normal, normal childhood, uh, normal activities uh, in a very supportive family. My name is Jacqueline Zoe, and I attend the East Somerville Community School. My question is, what was Jesse Norman's favorite song growing up? Now, Jesse's song, her favorite song growing up, well, now I really don't know. Um, but I am aware of some of her earliest um, solo numbers, and they included um, No Man is an Island, You'll Never Walk Alone, which she continued to like, I think, um, just kind of all of her life. She would reference that song. She liked it. And many, many hymns. Um, she used to sing when she was young and sort of in Augusta and required to sing on programs. She'd sing hymns and she would do those in combination with some of her friends. They would do duets and they would do trios. Um, so I don't know what her favorite was, but um, that is at least some of her young musical history. Hi, my name is Nora and I attend the Winter Hill Community Innovation School. When and what was Miss Norman's first gig? How did she feel performing publicly for the first time? Thank you for your time. Well, I'll take the second part of your question first in terms of how does she uh, feel performing for the first time? And let me tell you that we were all involved uh, with performing in church uh, an early age. So the whole idea of getting over stage fright uh, was something that uh, we uh, dealt with very early on. It's natural, however, uh, to uh, you know feel some anxiety, uh, even when you have uh, been performing for a long time, uh, when you are anxious to make sure that you do your best, you deliver your, uh, your, your best and top performance. And, and so that's something that you never really uh, get over, but you overcome it because you prepare to overcome it. So uh, when did she first get paid for performing? I don't really know. Um, I think probably sometime in college because when she was in um, elementary school and in junior high and high school, uh, she certainly um, received a lot of attention and accolades uh, for her performances, but it probably wasn't until she got to college uh, when she was performing at some community event while she was uh, in school at Howard University uh, that she may have received an honorarium or a donation here or there as a struggling college student, um, but uh, that would be it. Hi, my name is Ellis and I go to the Argentina School. What was your favorite song that Jesse Norman performed? So in terms of my favorite song, I think I loved um, anything that my sister was singing. Um, probably not just um, because of the breadth of her talent, but just because she was my sister, my big sister. And when I think of favorite songs, um, it is not even one of the beautiful, beautiful arias or one of the leader songs or even one of the uh, Gershwin numbers or anything, but it would be a traditional African-American spiritual, uh, which became her signature song. He's got the whole world in his hands. I used to love 
to Saber City. Hi, my name is Aiden. I go to West Somerville Neighborhood School. I have many questions about Jessie Norman because she seems like a very interesting person. My main question is, what made her choose opera as her main singing style? For some reason, as early as when she was in elementary school, she liked to listen to the opera on the radio. Uh, people listened to a lot of radio back then. And on Saturdays, there was a program that would come on from the Metropolitan Opera uh, sponsored by Texaco. And uh, Jesse would religiously listen to that program and was inspired by it. But I can't say that uh, at that time that she knew she was going to uh, become an opera singer, an opera star. I believe that her direction to do that came about uh, when sometime between, uh, say, high school and, and early college, uh, when uh, she was being steered in that direction by uh, people that knew music and uh, were awed by the uh, quality of her uh, ability to sing and were telling her that she could she could she could make it uh, as an opera singer. Uh, and um, as she went on to uh, Howard University and and the, under the training of uh, Carolyn Grant um, and then on to University of Michigan under uh, Elizabeth Mannion and Pierre Vanek, um, she accepted the real possibility and then devoted her life uh, to uh, that type of uh, singing. But I would say that uh, once she really had received broad acclaim as uh, an opera singer, uh, once she's gone through the paces of singing some of the most difficult uh, you know, pieces out there, uh, she, felt, she felt comfortable uh, broadening uh, her repertoire and she began to uh, get into uh, jazz, um, more into uh, various uh, types of, of popular music, even though opera remained the foundation. Um, she, in the last, um, say, uh, quarter of her career, um, she showed her versatility. Uh, in, in many forms of song. Hi, my name is Enid Malaya, and I go to West Somerville Neighborhood School. And my question is, has Jesse Norman ever performed in a movie? Bye, thank you. Well, in terms of movies, Miss Norman did not perform in movies. Um, she did not feel that she could control the quality of her performance in a movie setting. And therefore she turned down actually a number of movie and uh, TV show opportunities. So the only images um, of her performing are on DVD from concerts that she performed all over the world, as well as some opportunities when she was filming uh, during one of her recordings. My name is Daniel and I attend the East Somerville Community School. My question is, did Jesse Norman ever want to do anything else other than opera singing? At some point, junior high high school she talked about maybe wanting to be a doctor 
And I think by the time she got to Howard University, uh, she was still sort of thinking along those lines. Uh, but of course, uh, it would, would have been difficult to um, you know, be a pre-med and also uh, do what needed to be done to try to become a great opera singer. Uh, so she uh, gave up the idea of uh, going the medicine route, uh, but she didn't give up the idea of being an armchair doctor, uh, meaning that if you ever were around her and you talked about some illness or ailment, you could always get a prescription from Jesse Norman, whether you asked for it or not. In addition to being an opera singer, she was um, a great philanthropist, excuse me, philanthropist. Got a little tongue tied there. Uh, and she gave uh, her time to many great causes like the Balm and Gilead, which was an organization that focused on supporting people with AIDS. Uh, she was involved with the Meals on Wheels program, you know, providing meals for senior citizens who couldn't get out. Uh, she was involved with the National Girl Scouts. She was involved with the uh, New York Public Library. Um, she was involved with the Dance Theater of Harlem and uh, many other uh, charitable causes. So um, she was a singer, but she was also um, a philanthropist and a humanitarian. And later in her career, she was also a trustee at her alma mater, Howard University. Hello, my name is Jefferson and I attend the East Somerville Community School. My question is, did your parents support the idea of your sister becoming an opera singer? Once it was clear that she had a special voice that had potential, this being confirmed by her, her getting the uh, scholarship to Howard University and, and becoming um, a, um, a star there. Um, and getting an additional scholarship to Howard University, uh, placing in a voice competition at the Metropolitan Opera um, when she was yet in college. At, it became clear that there was a real possibility and, and that was embraced uh, by my parents. But initially there was some reluctance because think about the early 1960s and, and the careers that were um, available, the, the steady careers, steady, S-T-E-A-D-Y, steady, S -T -E -A -D -Y, steady uh, careers that had decent pay connected to them for African Americans in those days. So primarily you were talking about teaching or you were talking about uh, being in law, uh, being in medicine, maybe being the minister of a big congregation or working for the post office. So things were beginning to open up, but they weren't that broadly open at the time. Um, and so the idea of you know, going off and on a different track was a little, shall I say, a little scary. You know, we were raised in Augusta, Georgia, home of James Brown. And, and so he was an example of a successful singer. 
but he was singing popular music. Uh, that's different from singing classical music and, and, and the acceptance of a person of color into uh, the realm of operatic music was different than going into popular music. And, um, and so uh, my parents had good reason to be reluctant, but uh, in final analysis, what they focused on was us getting a sound education and then making our own choices from there. And uh, we weren't steered or uh, directed into our different careers. We all were doing something different. Uh, and um, Jesse chose opera and that's the way it happened. And it was a good choice. 